My name is Bill Kasner, and uh, as a disclosure, uh, I am a horse addict and have been since I was about four years old. Uh, horses have been uh, an incredibly important uh, part of, of my life. Uh, as I sit up here, I, I, I feel a little bit out of place. I looked at uh, uh, the roster and, and virtually everybody that is a presenter today has uh, the title of doctor in, in front of their name. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess I did get my uh, uh, postgraduate uh, work uh, done at the racetrack uh, in my youth. I was on the racetrack until I was about 31 years old. And uh, believe me, uh, I, it, it was a great education. Uh, I've always had a passion uh, uh, for, for science. I'm, I'm a bit of a... Uh, science nerd. I love reading clinical trials and, and looking for anything uh, that could be to the benefit of our horses. And I've always tried to use good science combined uh, with, with novel protocols and traditional methods uh, to try and improve uh, the welfare of, of my horses. Uh, Dr. White gave a uh, very good presentation on the importance of, of biosecurity and employing uh, best practices in, in barn management. And of course, uh, Dr. Holcomb uh, gave an excellent presentation uh, on the dynamics of the equine respiratory system and uh, the underlying pathology of inflammatory airway disease. My presentation uh, is going to be on uh, some barn management uh, practices uh, that I've employed over the years for optimal equine respiratory health. If you'll walk down a number of shed rows at the racetrack, uh, you will probably hear horses coughing. Inflammatory airway disease, or IAD, as it is commonly referred to, is similar to asthma in humans, and the occurrence is estimated to be as high as 50% uh, by some researchers. Horses can develop inflamed throats and small airway disease, uh, guttural pouch infections, and demonstrate uh, excessive mucus production. This is the problem. Horses at the track and at many training facilities live in stalls that have accumulated decades of pathogens and allergens, including bacteria, viruses, biofilms, fungi, and mold. The organic material in the stalls creates a favorable environment for these to survive. Many stalls are bedded on straw, which tends to be dusty and a source of mold and fungi. Stalls often have low ceilings, which limits ventilation and air exchange. Ceilings also allow the accumulation of ammonia, uh, which if you can smell it, it's toxic. Ceilings, uh, above the ceilings, straw and hay are stored. And every time uh, a bale of straw is, is pulled down or somebody uh, walks on that ceiling, uh, dust is, is knocked loose in that stall. This is another problem. Horses at the track and at many training facilities, oops, got off off key here. <laughs> Accumulated muck in front of the stalls offers another challenge uh, to air quality, especially when the muck truck uh, comes to pick it up. I know there's probably a number of you uh, in this audience that have been around the racetrack in the afternoon when the trucks come around. And the one thing's for sure, you don't want to be downwind. And, uh, and inevitably, uh, uh, they're, they're uh, aerolizing this and, and uh, is blowing under shed rows. 
When a horse breathes dust, it can transport a variety of pathogens and allergens uh, deep into their respiratory tract. Extremely small dust particles can migrate uh, very deep into the respiratory tract. Inflammatory airway disease may progress into chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD. Uh, per the University of, of Illinois' uh, veterinary department, and of course, uh, uh, in Dr. Holcomb's uh, presentation, uh, uh, I'll, I'll quote from the uh, veterinary department at Illinois, IAD and COPD uh, begin with irritants such as dust and mold causing a hypersensitivity type of allergic reaction in the small airways of the lungs. Uh, you, you saw that on uh, uh, Dr. Holcomb's uh, slides. Immune cells infiltrate the area, damaging the linings of small airways of the lungs and stimulating mucus production and bronchioconstriction. These uh, constrictive small airways in the lungs cause the horse to have to work harder in order to breathe, especially on expiration. Although it has not been clinically defined, uh, the consensus of, of many practitioners is that inflammatory airway disease uh, contributes uh, to bleeding. Prevention. There are four major factors uh, to consider in managing air hygiene. Uh, ventilation, bedding, forage, and contamination. I have designed and built two barns with quality ventilation and air exchange as the cornerstone. One is my training barn in Texas, and the other is the main training barn at Windstar Farm who I would uh, suspect that some of you have, uh, have seen. Both are metal barns with high ceilings with boxed-in clear spans, eliminating surfaces for dust to accumulate. When you box in the beams, you also make it less attractive uh, for birds, which uh, can uh, produce their, their own set of, of contaminants. Both are metal barns. Uh, when, you, when you box, uh, excuse me, the stalls have open fronts with large outside windows to facilitate airflow. Uh, as you can see, we've, uh, that's been one of the most important additions uh, to, the, to the barn. Uh, uh, at any time of the day, you can feel the air moving in and out of those uh, stalls. Metal barns are easier to keep clean and do not offer the nooks and crannies of wooden barns uh, where dust, allergens, and pathogens uh, can accumulate. Unfortunately, when a horse goes to the racetrack, they are housed in your typical racetrack stalls that may not present the best environment for their respiratory health. Another thing you see at the, the racetracks uh, pretty consistently are box fans. And box fans are something uh, that uh, can draw, can stir up uh, dust in a stall. Uh, I had one astute trainer uh, that noticed an increase in coughing in his horses uh, in the spring of the year when he hung them up. Uh, he now reverses his fans. He, he turns them backwards where it will actually pull uh, the air, dust, and ammonia out of the stalls. In our barns, uh, you can see up there, we use uh, uh, large, uh, slow-moving ceiling fans uh, that can be reversed to draw air up. Uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with these. They're, they're manufactured uh, right here in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, they have the, the brand name of, of big-ass fans. Uh, if you've been in and out of the uh, Bluegrass Airport, I'm sure you've seen the one uh, in, in the lobby uh, where uh, ticketing occurs. Preferred bedding, uh, 
is shavings on the right and wood pellets on the left. Straw bedding is a source of dust, fungi, and mold spores. Anyone that has ever shaken out a stall with straw understands this. Dusty straw gives me asthma just like that, as I'm sure it does uh, for some horses. High quality, long-stemmed, bright straw can be a suitable bedding, but it is extremely hard to obtain. What is usually available is, uh, is sub-quality, substandard uh, chaffy straw. Bedding horses on good clean shavings, wood pellets, or peat moss are the best alternatives. High quality shavings are growing popularity at the racetrack. Wood pellets are used at Windstar's training barn and are an excellent uh, alternative and economical. They are virtually dust free, uh, they're low in pathogens, and stalls are easily cleaned. Peat moss is uh, used extensively in Europe and is an excellent bedding uh, that is antimicrobial, uh, neutralizes ammonia, and is low in dust, but the availability, of course, is limited in the U.S. Uh, Dr. Holcomb mentioned hay nets. Hay nets are traditional and look good lining a shed row, but are not in the best interest of our horse's respiratory health. A commonly agreed upon strategy in veterinary respiratory literature is feeding horses hay on the ground. With hay nets, a horse has to eat with an elevated head, and he will burrow pockets in, into that hay net. These are areas uh, that become sources for contamination. When the hay nets are refilled, these contaminated areas become trapped and create another favorable environment uh, for pathogens to thrive. When a horse is fed on the ground, of course, he will lower his head. This allows uh, mucus and contaminants uh, to be expelled by the natural movement of, of gravity and, and the respiratory cilia. Uh, we use uh, stall mats uh, with a vertical, you can see uh, the picture on the right, uh, we put a, a small a stall mat on the, on, on the ground underneath and then we use a piece of flexible uh, belting uh, that's attached uh, to both walls uh, that you can put the hay in. Uh, Todd Pletcher uh, uses this uh, configuration. And of course, uh, you know, many horses are going to uh, pull their hay out on the ground, but uh, as we know, they are very skilled at uh, picking out every bit of it, and, and they're not going to waste any. Hay steamers are an effective way of diminishing dust and killing bacteria, fungal spores, and mold in the hay. The unit infuses steam into the core of the hay bale, uh, heating it in excess of 212 degrees, killing pathogens without adversely affecting nutrition. Horses will actually leave their grain tub to go and uh, eat uh, the sweet-smelling hay when you put it in their stalls. Uh, it's especially effective uh, on alfalfa, which can be dusty if it's not baled at uh, the optimum uh, moisture level. You can also wet uh, the hay down with a water hose uh, to diminish the dust. I used to, I used to do that method. Uh, this is preferable uh, to soaking it in a tub, which uh, can leach out uh, nutrients, but it's uh, certainly not as, as good as uh, the hay steamer. This is a picture of a fogger, of course, and uh, one of my guys uh, uh, fogging uh, one of my stalls uh, in, in Texas. Uh, the biggest challenge in trying to achieve a clean respiratory environment is the challenge of the years of accumulated pathogens and contaminants in that stall. When I was training in the 70s, 
uh, I raced at uh, Oaklawn Park and was assigned the same stalls every year. I had a horse each year get a terrible case of, of skin disease uh, out of the same stall. I mean, it, would, it was all down his back, all uh, over his loins, down his back legs. It was, it was bad. The symptoms were always exactly the same. After the third horse got it, I kind of finally put two and two together and uh, started uh, power washing and uh, uh, disinfecting my stalls before we moved in. And of course, uh, this is one of the first things that should be done when shipping to another racetrack is to send someone ahead uh, to pressure wash the stalls with a, with a strong uh, disinfectant prior to bedding them down. Uh, we use uh, just a, a Clorox mix mixture. It's cheap and easy. Uh, another uh, very effective method that we employ is fogging our stalls at the track twice a week with a novel antimicrobial that is non-toxic to horses and humans. It takes about four minutes uh, to fog the walls and floor of the stall and kills most uh, pathogens, including MRSA, E. coli, Staph, Streptococcus, and Pseudomonas. The one bacteria that it doesn't kill is the lactobacillus, which is, of course, the, the beneficial uh, bacteria in our guts. Fogging uh, is also extremely effective against biofilms. I know uh, a number of you in the audience that are, that are familiar with, uh, with the challenge of them. Biofilms are any group of microorganisms in which cells stick to each other, and these cells can adhere to any surface in the stall. These conglomerates of cells are embedded with uh, a self-produced polymeric matrix. Biofilms are very tenacious and problematic. Uh, the protective coating they produce is difficult uh, to penetrate with conventional disinfectants uh, such as Tectrol and Clorox solutions and uh, are a source of many clinical and hospital-derived uh, infections. Uh, I once read a statistic that said that 70% of the pseudomonas infections in humans uh, were hospital derived. This is uh, this is the product uh, that that I use. Uh, it is uh, part of a family of new antimicrobials known as CSAs. These were developed at uh, Brigham Young. University by some uh, very uh, smart guys. Uh, they noticed uh, uh, there's a molecule uh, called LL37 uh, that is naturally occurring in our own systems. Uh, and it's, it has been replicated, but it's very expensive to produce this molecule. Uh, so these smart guys at Brigham Young, Dr. Savage and his team, uh, uh, started looking at that molecule and trying to figure out uh, what were the aspects of it that uh, they could uh, build uh, to have uh, perhaps the, the, the same uh, antimicrobial effect. Uh, LL37 is, is uh, there, there are some other uh, antimicrobial peptides, but uh, uh, the bubble boy, who you've always, you've, you've probably heard about uh, and has to live in, in a totally sterile environment, uh, is lacking uh, these antimicrobial uh, peptides. CSAs are extremely safe and have been used in extending uh, the shelf life of, of chicken carcasses. Uh, they are undergoing uh, clinical trials for use in nebulizing uh, cystic uh, fibrosis patients. And, it, and they are used uh, in medical surgical, in coating uh, medical surgical hardware and catheters. Uh, these antimicrobial agents are non-hazardous and decompose into non-toxic compounds under mild conditions, including uh, those 
encountered in the gastrointestinal tract. And uh, this, of course, makes them uh, safe and environmentally friendly. Uh, this antimicrobial is very economical to use, costing about $70 to mix uh, with five gallons of water, and it takes about four minutes to do each stall. Um, five gallons uh, last us uh, over a month, uh, and I have I'm doing it twice a week, and I have 30 stalls uh, in my barn. Uh, for the past six years, I have shipped my weanlings uh, to Texas uh, from Kentucky in the fall of the year. The first three years, we had uh, the usual cases of baby crud go through the barn. Uh, You know, it was something, I know all of you are familiar with baby cud, you all have had to deal with it and everything, and uh, uh, it, was, it was something we dealt with uh, virtually all through the winter uh, and into the spring. You know, these, these young horses would have, uh, they'd be snotting, they'd have coughs, uh, they had, they'd have temperatures. That was always uh, my first question when I hit the barn in the morning, is uh, who's got a temp? Uh, any, anybody knew coffee? And uh, we, were, we were constantly uh, treating these horses, nebulizing them, et, et cetera. Three years ago, uh, we started fogging the stalls twice a week uh, with this antimicrobial. This was before uh, the fourth group uh, that I brought in. Uh, amazingly enough, we have not had one cough not one snot, and not one temperature in the last three years. Uh, I know that might be something that uh, is, uh, some people might be a little skeptical about, and uh, there, might, there might be some eyes rolling in here, but uh, I want to repeat, not one cough, not one snot, not one temp. And it's also virtually eliminated our skin disease. The baby crud has always been considered to be inevitable, just part of dealing with the immature immune systems of young horses. The traditional wisdom has always been that they have to go through this exposure to build their immunities. Uh, I asked Dr. Rob Holland, who I'm sure uh, a number of you are familiar with, uh, he did his uh, doctoral work at, uh, at, at the Gluck on pathogens, uh, and he has a veterinary practice that uh, he limits uh, to respiratory issues. And uh, I asked Dr. Holland, I said, is this a fact? Is it a, a necessary process uh, for building immunity? And uh, Rob kind of laughed and uh, he said, uh, uh, horses will build an immunity when exposed to a particular pathogen. The problem, he said, is that there are an infinite number of pathogens that are in a constant state of mutation, and the horse will only build an immunity to those pathogens that they are exposed to. Uh, it's, it's basically the same reason why we can't vaccinate or develop an immunity against uh, the common cold. Uh, he said horses, uh, as horses mature, uh, their immune systems uh, naturally mature, and become stronger, and of course, uh, some horses just naturally have better immune systems than others and are better uh, able to deal with it. I think every trainer uh, has recognized this. You have those superior individuals that just deal with, with anything that you throw at them. You know, uh, Baffert uh, said uh, uh, that uh, he, never, he never had uh, 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 a problem uh, on the on the Triple Crown Trail. Uh, my trainer Owen Hardy uh, now uses the fogger at the track, and has significantly reduced his respiratory issues and uh, his occurrence of, of bleeding. Michael Dickinson is also using this method. Kentucky Downs started fogging their stalls last year because they had a high turnover of horses that ship in and out of the races. And they thought uh, as 
that they're very aware of, of the importance of biosecurity. Uh, the success of implementing, uh, of implementing this novel uh, protocol of uh, routinely uh, disinfecting uh, stalls before you ship in and fogging uh, with the antimicrobial uh, has gone far beyond what I ever thought was possible. This, of course, is a nebulizer, and uh, it was a, a tool that I used uh, constantly for the first three years when I was shipping those weanlings and yearlings in. Uh, and, but in the last uh, three years, I haven't had to put it on one horse. It's just sat in the tack room, and uh, the box it's in is collected dust. Uh, need to probably address that. <laughs> uh, the solutions that uh, you can put in nebulizers, of, of course, uh, uh, you need to consult your veterinarian, and there are a variety of solutions, and uh, uh, anywhere from corticosteroids, uh, antibiotics, uh, uh, antimicrobials that, uh, that can be used. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Holland has educated me on is the importance of disinfecting scopes. Now, I know every vet in here is, probably does an excellent job of, of disinfecting uh, their scopes in between horses. But uh, the truth of the matter is there are many veterinarians that are very cavalier about disinfecting their scopes. Uh, any of you that have been at the sales and watched them, uh, you'll understand this. Uh, they'll take a, a baby wipe, wipe it off, and throw it around her neck, walk down, do another horse. And it's, it's concerning. Uh, I had a horse uh, uh, named Colonel John back in 2010 that was uh, one of the early favorites uh, for the Santa Anita Handicap, the big cap. And training, I mean, just magnificently up to this race. The day before the race, he spiked a temp, and he got a really uh, tenacious uh, respiratory infection. And uh, we were scratching our heads. We couldn't figure out where, uh, what the source of this was. There wasn't, there hadn't been a horse coughing in that barn on either side uh, for, for weeks. Uh, and the only thing that we could really uh, look back at was that, uh, that Colonel John worked five days uh, before uh, the big cap, and uh, of course we scoped him after the race, and the incubation period uh, fit. And, and that was where uh, uh, he probably uh, that was probably, can't definitively say it, but that was probably the source of, of the infection. And, and of course, uh, we all understand how expensive uh, that is. We, we have windows of opportunity with these horses, and if they ever miss a window, uh, it will never be regained. Uh, so I guess the takeaway message is, uh, as you as uh, uh, trainers and owners, I know that, again, this doesn't apply to any vet in here because I know they're perfect, but um, uh, I would always, I would watch uh, your veterinarian, uh, if you have horses at the sales uh, that are being scoped, uh, don't be shy. Just say, Doc, Really, really scrub that, uh, that scrope down uh, before you put it in my horse. I'd appreciate it. One thing I've learned over the years is that there are two things that prevent the addition of protocols to the daily routine in training barns, cost and time pressure. The routine at the track and at the training barn requires uh, that everything get done in about six hours in the morning from five, about five to 11, and uh, two and a half hours in the afternoon, uh, two to 4.30. Anything 
uh, that is added that interrupts the rhythm of the routine is resisted. Anything that costs more money, labor included, is resisted. But paying attention uh, to stall ventilation and providing a good dust-free bedding is easy, inexpensive, and beneficial. Taking down the hay nets and feeding your horses on the ground is easy and certainly healthier for them. Using the hay steamer does incur a cost of about $2,500, but it is a very effective tool in managing dust and contaminants in the hay and it's a worthwhile investment. One thing we invested in was our own scope. Uh, and, and Dr. Holland was uh, very gracious to uh, uh, show our uh, barn foreman, uh, assistant trainer, uh, how to properly uh, disinfect that scope uh, every time it was used uh, on our horses. So now we at least do have uh, a, a little bit of, of control of that one particular element. And above all, just being aware of how filthy a stall environment uh, really is uh, should motivate any trainer uh, to, at the very least, uh, send somebody ahead of time uh, to, to the next racetrack to power wash their stalls prior to moving into the barn. In truth, it is something that should be done at every racetrack uh, by their own management uh, as a service to our, our horses, to the health and welfare of our horses. Uh, at this time, Kentucky Downs is the only track uh, that I know of that does this. They, they power wash the stalls at the beginning of the meet and they fog them uh, every time a horse uh, goes in and out of that stall. And finally, fogging the stalls twice a week uh, with the novel CSA antimicrobial is remarkably effective and is an easy, low-cost addition uh, to any stables uh, routine. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Kathy? No, we do. Thank you. Okay. Um, both for Dr. Holcomb and um, Bill, uh, there's a mic, a handheld mic there, if you want to grab it, if you, it's easier for questions. Over here to the side. Oh. Sorry. To, the, to your right. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> Sorry. You can pull that off if you guys wanted to sit down. That would be fine to answer questions that way, whichever is easier for you. Okay. Um, the question is, has research been done that may correlate the environmental effects to EIPH as a response to equine, equi or equine anti-inflammatory disease that affects performance? Could you repeat that yeah. question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> has research been done that may correlate the environmental effects to EIPH as a response to equine inflammatory airway disease that affects performance? Uh, so the short answer is no. There is not work that has asked that particular question. But I think people have looked at the environment and its influence on inflammatory airway disease. And I think that has been confirmed. The associations between inflammatory airway disease and then bleeding, or EIPH, are somewhat, I think most people think that there is an association there, but that has not really been unraveled yet. Perhaps that'd be a project for uh, the Grayson. Any other questions? Thank you. 